long before the foundations of the world that what had happened is going to happen. And because his word is forever settled, he said, all things work together for good to them that love God. We may not understand now, but what had happened is going to work out for our good as individuals, as families, and as a denomination. As a matter of fact, it's going to work out for the good of the Church of God as a whole. I'm talking of the body of Christ. I just want to remind us of one or two things very quickly. Number one, God is sovereign. He does as he pleases in the course of heaven. And one of his sermons, Darius himself said, God does not need a visa to pay you a visit or to do whatever he wants to do in your life. He does not need your permission. He is the Almighty. He is the Lord of hosts. He is the Commander-in-Chief of all the hosts of heaven. And you, you don't command the Commander-in-Chief. He tells you what to do. And nobody ever says no, Lord. You don't say no to your Lord. Whatever your Lord says, the answer is, yes, Lord. And I have taught you that when you obey, when it is convenient for you, that is called cooperation. When you obey, when it is not even convenient for you at all, that is called submission. And the day we said we surrendered our life to Jesus Christ, we are saying we submit. Yes, Lord, to everything, in living, in dying, when it is convenient, when it is inconvenient, it is, yes, Lord. And I've told you before, death is not a function of age. Young people die, old people die, children die. It's not a function of age. And we have also learned that it is not how long you live, it is how well. The Lord Jesus Christ himself died at the age of 33 plus. John the Baptist never lived to be 34. And yet the Lord Jesus Christ said, of four men born of a woman in the Old Testament, the greatest was John the Baptist. He wasn't around for long. We have lost a champion. You will agree with me on that. But then, let us consider him a seed that we have sown. And let's get ready for a very, very special harvest. The Bible says, the reason God sowed the Lord Jesus Christ as a seed is so that he can become the firstborn of many brethren. I want us to join our forces together and produce many champions like Damilari. Let's produce thousands of pasodi that will go round the whole world and shake the world for the Lord Jesus Christ. As a matter of fact, that is how we can really honor him and honor his memory. The church of God is marching on. The gates of hell cannot prevail against the church of God. It doesn't matter what the devil may be thinking now. <laughs> the devil was rejoicing the day the Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross. But if he had known what was coming, 
He would have left the Lord alone. The devil was rejoicing when Job lost all his children in one day and lost several other things as a result. But if he had known, he would have left Job alone. Because at the end, <laughs> the Bible said God blessed the latter end of Job more than the beginning. My beloved children, I have good news for you. Mighty things are about to begin in our individual lives, in our families, in the redeemed Christianity of God, in the body of Christ. Mighty things are about to begin. Because I recorded the message of this Sunday that we just passed before this incident happened. And if you listen to that sermon, at the two o'clock summer, and you heard me say, recorded before the incident, that for every examination that will pass, there will be promotion. The tougher the exam, the bigger the promotion. This has been a tough one, but by the grace of God, we have passed. And promotion is on the way. So I'm going to encourage you. Let's join forces together. Let's win muscles like never before. Let's plant churches like never before. Let's drive the devil crazy. Let's show him the stuff we are made of. You know, the Bible says, if you fail in the day of trouble, it means your strength is small. But our strength is not small. It's not small because greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. And the word of God is set to it. The gates of hell shall not prevail against his church. We are marching on. Cry if you wish to. But don't cry for Pastor D. <laughs> because he's resting in glory. Cry because you are the one still fighting the battle. But then fight courageously. Because on the resurrection morning, we shall meet again. Thank you very, very much for coming. Thank you for your show of love. Keep on praying for me because Paul said, pray for us. Keep on praying for my wife. Keep on praying for the widow. Keep on praying for the children. But more than anything else, keep on praying for yourself that you too will finish well and finish strong so that on the resurrection morning, we shall be together again. Anyone who has caught a glimpse of heaven will not be crying for Pastor D. Because there's no comparison between heaven and earth. I've seen it. I know what I'm talking about. If you see me walking like Chakal at my age, it's because I know the reward that is waiting. That the more you achieve for him, for the Lord here on earth, the more will be your reward when you get to heaven. Join me, my beloved children. Let's march on. Let's smash the head of Satan. Let's show him that the army of the Almighty God is marching on to victory. God bless you all. You will end well. You will end strong. We're going to be much more stronger than ever before. Get ready for miracles that you have never seen before. Happening in your life, happening in your families, happening in the redeemed Christian Church of God, happening in the body of Christ, so that the enemy will hear us coming and tremble. God bless you, my beloved ones. God be with you. And I want to give you one assurance like never before, like, I mean, like never before, and we are putting this on record, I'm going to show even greater interest in the youth and the young adults' ministry of our mission. God bless you. Have a wonderful time. I will see you again soon. In Jesus' mighty name, praise the Lord.